Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Black Baseball Mixtape. I am your host, Cheats. As always, the mixtape is brought to you by the Family Podcast Network. I am really, really excited because, as I mentioned on the last episode, the mixtape broke into the top 100 of baseball podcasts on the Apple Podcast Charts. It is our first time breaking in. We immediately fell out, but... (laughs) But with your support, we are going to get back there. Please subscribe, rate, review, share the Black Baseball Mixtape. Uh, a lot more coming as the season picks up in 2023. I am joined by, but look, I'm excited because I'm joined by a hometown product for me. I am born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. Cal Battle is a pro player in the Yankees organization. He also played his high school ball and I think some middle school ball and high school ball in the Richmond, Virginia area. Kyle, welcome to the mixtape. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, man, this is awesome. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, but grew, my, grew up my whole life in Richmond, so definitely played a bunch, played a bunch of fields around there, probably a bunch of different people too. So That's awesome. No, AT, I was telling, I was telling you before we kind of went on the air, it's one of those things where once I, I, I started getting familiar with you and your career and started talking to folks, Everybody has a Kyle Battle story now. Everybody I talk to around the game, they're like, oh, yeah, we know Kyle. Kyle's great. And I will say this. uh, Everyone to a man says wonderful, wonderful things about you, not only your game, but you off the field as a person. So that is it's got to be awesome. Oh, man. Thank you so much. That's awesome to hear. Uh, I love all the support from everyone in Richmond. Uh, I know they've had my back um, from the start, even me just getting into baseball. Everyone was so so welcoming me starting because I was the last sport I actually started playing. So they got convinced me to get out there, and it's been just full support from there. I read somewhere that you were a hockey player. Is that true? Yep, that was my first first sport. I started skating when I was like four years old. I think my mom said we were there was a game on TV or something, and the Richmond Renegades, a minor league hockey team, used yep, to play in Richmond. Absolutely. <laughs> I think she told me one day I looked up, I was on on the TV. I looked up and I was like, I want to do that. And she was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and it just started from there. How competitive were you in hockey? Did you, did you play in hockey leagues? Like how did this work? Or was it just oh, like yeah, I played, I played travel all the way up until around middle school ish. Uh, That's one crazy. Of my, one of my teammates is actually in minors for hockey. Uh, I think he's with the St. Louis Blues, so he's knocking on the door of the NHL. So I got got some buddies scattered around. Different That's leagues. crazy. Well, let's talk about now, and then we'll go backwards in your career. But right now, you are in the Yankees organization. You signed with them as a as a free agent, like right? you signed as an undrafted free agent. What is that like? Let, talk to me about that process because. Um, you know, the Major League J- Baseball draft, there's a lot of ups and d- downs, a lot. Of, it, I will say this, and I've said this on several interviews, the Major League Baseball draft is some of the most confusing things that I've ever, <laughs> ever followed, processed. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I know you have good people around you, but you signed with the Yankees as an undrafted free agent. Talk to me about that process. Was it an opportunity where you just got to, because it was undrafted, you were able to sign with any organization you wanted? How did that work for you? Uh, so I guess my situation was a little unique, um, just with timing of certain events and then like COVID, all that happened. So mm-hmm. mine was pretty interesting. So my first draft year was 2019, 2019. That was my junior year in college, but I was actually recovering from an injury right there. So it didn't happen that year. Then we had the COVID year was also draft eligible. They cut the draft down. So missed out that year. So Went back to college for my fifth year, which was probably the best decision I've ever made. We won the won the Conference USA Championship for Old Dominion. Um, ho- first time hosting a regional 11th ranked national seed. Probably one of the best ODU teams to have come through ODU, and that says a lot. So I'm glad I'm I'm glad all that stuff happened because it made a whole bunch of memories. And then 2021 season draft was happening. I was getting calls during it, but you know, at this point, a little bit, a little bit older, which is, it's all good. Did my time in college. So uh, the Yankees are actually the first team to contact me right after the draft. It was, they probably actually called me while the draft was still happening. And they reached out, asked if I still wanted to play and all that. And I was like, for sure. And then uh, Scott, they got me Stuart Smothers. Uh, he probably covers a little bit in Richmond too. 
Uh, he called me back and it was like, hey, look, we got a deal for you if you're ready to go. I was like, yes, sign me up. It's New York Yankees who – that's what, that probably the, the franchise of baseball in America. So That is awesome. And you spent last season in mostly the Florida Compacts League and high A, right? Uh, so, yep, that first draft year, I played uh, mostly in the complex league. Once we got down there, I finished the season with Loe, uh, with the Tarpons down there for the end of the season in the playoffs. And then this year, unfortunate injury in spring training, sent me back a month. Uh, but then we got right back back into Loe, and I ended up uh, getting moved up to high towards the end of the year. So, uh, pretty successful year last year, like – it was awesome. Just playing, playing in an organization, being around all the people, seeing, seeing everyone walk around. This can't pass it up. So, what are your days like now? And as you're preparing to go go back, I think spring training starts in around March, correct? Um, what, what what's the what's the schedule? What's the routine? How are you uh, getting ready for the upcoming season? Uh so ever since I probably once I after the season, I probably took like two two weeks off uh just doing nothing with my body and then from there i've been i've been grinding in the gym i've been trying to trying to put on some weight get a little bit stronger uh this off season so but recently this past month i've been in the gym in the morning six days a week right after that probably three or four times a week i'm uh right after the gym i go go over to d bat and hit which is actually where i'm Working right after I get done with all my my training and stuff, I actually give lessons to a bunch of the kids down here. Whoever wants to come get some insight, a little bit, spread some knowledge. Very nice. Now, you you did mention as well. You went to ODU, had had some time there. What was the biggest adjustment to going to pro ball as opposed to you know playing at Old Dominion? Um. Well, I guess right for jump like wood bats. It's a just a little bit different. But that's not. That's a if you you're a hitter, you just you figure that out. So, mm. <laughs> but I would say, I don't know everyone says it, but it's probably like the speed of the game. Speed of the game just a little bit faster, mm. just a little bit. So I would compare it to like in college, you got like your Friday, Saturday, Sunday weekend series. Mm. Usually, like the Friday and Saturday guys are are like those are two of the guys on the mound. Uh, for the team. So I would say pretty much every pitcher you're going to face in pro ball is probably like a good Friday or Saturday guy in college. Um, I do think going to college did help me prepare for this. It's not that big of a, as big of a jump. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, I'm just, just getting started. I'm at the lower levels. As, obviously as I move up, that's going to just keep increasing. And that's, that's the challenge in baseball. What would you say as you go into this year, not like long-term goals. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody obviously wants to move up the ranks. But what would you say you can kind of control yourself to make sure you're ready to go and prepared as best you can? And what are some of the things you're hoping to accomplish as you move through the season? Um, I think one my big goal this year is to just be like relaxed with it. Mm. Yeah, honest. So that's one of one of my things I've noticed when I've been playing. Uh, you really see it. You can actually see it in my numbers, uh, especially in college. Like my last COVID year in that uh, 2021 season in college, I like completely just said, I'm going to enjoy the game and just do whatever I can. And my numbers took off from there. Same thing in, same thing when I got into pro ball. Mm -hmm. You can literally see like the there's like a cutoff of like when I was pressing versus when I was like, you know what, I'm going a, I'm to a just have fun and and do that so this year i'm gonna just try and go in and like i know i'm gonna you're gonna press a little bit it's, it's baseball you want to be you want to be competitive but my thing is just try and enjoy every single day regardless of how it's going that's something that i really want to hammer this year um if i do that the numbers will come with it i haven't necessarily set like specific number goals right. i really want this yet uh but i do want to just try and play the game hard and make my way up the ranks as high as I can. Let's just try and make the highest level you can each year um, to show them how, what you can do out there. You bring up an important point, especially about just the pressure anybody puts on themselves, especially in baseball. You hear it over and over again. Baseball is a game of failure, right? If you fail seven out of 10 times, you're a hall of famer, basically. <laughs> so how have you applied? What are some of the ways that you've applied 
the mental aspect of the game. Like when you say, because it, it, you're exactly right, it's easier said than, than done. But when you find yourself in the flow, you find yourself relaxing. How do you, how do you get there mentally? Um, well, I guess off the field before, like even you get to the field, anything like that, it starts with a support system. Like you talked about, everybody in Richmond, like that's that's huge. Like just having those people behind you, even before you get to the field, mm-hmm. is uh, something that's it's good to have. Um, and then. I would say, like during the game, there's different different ways to kind of lock yourself back in. Like when I'm at the in the box, like I have a routine I go through every single time to kind of reset my head, all this other stuff. Uh, in the field, like I don't know, some people have something in their pocket you can just play with. There's a bunch of different ways. I just try and just slow the moment down. Like when, I, like I said, when I'm in the box, like always a deep breath right before right before you're about to face the pitcher. Deep breath, clear your mind of everything. Um, Really, just trying to trying to get to the next play. Mm. You know, we really get in trouble when your your mind starts thinking about the past and stuff that's already happened. Then you then everything starts speeding up. The speed of the game starts to catch up. So, really, just having like a deep breath, a mental cue, anything to kind of just reset yourself, bring yourself back into where your feet are. That's a good point, Cal. Bring me back to Old Dominion University and even before that, Glen Allen High School. Uh, you had six very successful careers at both stops. What was it about Old Dominion that uh, got you out of Richmond and down to Norfolk? <laughs> um, so I got actually the two teams that were heavily recruiting me. Don't say was, VCU. Don't this say was early, this was early in my high school high school career. So they these two jumped on me like right from the jump. It was VCU and Oh, then, Kyle. <laughs> how come you uh oh, I'm a Ram. Oh, I had a little, You're hurting I had my a heart bit. right now. I had a little bit like looks from UVA, but they were uh, ODU and VCU kind of hopped on it before that could even like take off. But um, it basically came down to actually, I'll say this first. This is funny because my mom actually is from like the Hampton area. She okay. went to VCU. Okay. So now I'm from Richmond coming down here to 7 5 to go to school. So we kind of doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me. And she said, I'll support you. I'll support you on the ODU and everything sense. except for basketball. Okay. I get it. I get it. What was but, it about what was it about Old Dominion that that's um, struck with you? Well, yeah, it was really so the first time I talked to the coaches, I was at a camp. They kind of just welcomed me with open arms. They were treating me just like I was family. So right off the jump. Then like a year later, came down for a tournament, another visit. Um, they showed me around and basically conversations went from there. They were just like, look, when you're, we have a senior, by the time you get here, our senior center fielder is going to be gone. Mm. So now this, this is going to give you a big opportunity. You have a real chance to come in here and start center field your freshman year, as opposed to VCU. They had some older, older mm. outfielders that actually I'm, I'm buddies with. Like, I, I knew them. They're good players. So they had some older outfielders. It's probably going to be maybe a year, mm. year-ish, maybe probably a year, maybe two, before I was really going to be able to establish myself in the field at VCU. So right off of that, they, ODU treated my family. I was going to get a chance to play right off the jump my freshman year. It was – it had to be a no-brainer. And it really came together for you. You had an amazing uh, freshman year at ODU, right? Yeah. Uh, freshman All-American that year, we actually had three of us. My One of my good buddies, Vinny Pasquantino, also from Richmond, and our other roommate, John Wilson. So we were all three, all three freshman all Americans that year. It was great time. The seniors were awesome. Uh <laughs> kind of but great, great year to introduce introduce us to college baseball. I'll say that. And what was the best thing about playing college baseball in general? I know uh, obviously having success at ODU is a great thing. Like you mentioned your your last year there was one of the most successful teams, but there's a spirit to college baseball that just seems really really awesome and really unique what was what was the best thing for you um it's definitely it's got to be the people for sure i know everyone says that but it's by far like the people and kind of i would say just trying to carry on what the people did for the years before you necessarily because mm-hmm. my freshman year after our seniors left i was like okay we gotta let's keep this rolling because of those guys even even my last year um 2021 when we won the conference usa championship like i thought i thought about the seniors i had my freshman year like dang like they actually like they're 
what four or five years out of here, but they like they they started this right there, and it's kind of just like that wanting to just build with the guys and also the people you people you meet along the way. Like some of my best friends are guys I played college baseball with. Does pro baseball have a culture? I know college baseball has a culture, right? And it's like I said, it's a spirit. When you're in pro ball, does it have a culture just yet, or does it kind of feel a little bit different, a little bit more, in a way, lack of a better term, does it feel a little bit more colder? I would say, well, college baseball definitely has a culture, you're right, because, like, we spend so much time together. Like, we live together all the time, classes together, go out together. We do basically everything together. So there's definitely more of, like, a tight-knit culture in college baseball. Professional baseball, like you don't, you're not as spending as much time with them, kind of mm-hmm. like off the field necessarily. Like everyone just, you kind of do your thing. Like people, like you have, you have your buddies on the team. They all hang out. You sometimes we all get together and do something, and that's awesome. Uh, but it's definitely more individualized. I would say there's definitely culture there. It's just a little bit different. I would say a good amount of the culture is like the Americans and then the. Like right, the there's Latin- a lot more international players, right? Yeah, just well, generally. Americans and then the international is like just trying to bond and like learn each other's different cultures and stuff. Like I, That's I, I, enjoy, cool. I enjoy just hanging around, like all the like I, Jason Dominguez, all those guys. I love just hanging around them, just listening to them talk Spanish. Like I'm trying to pick up on stuff they're saying. <laughs> and, like if they have so they have something funny, like they'll, bam, say it to me, say it in English, and then we're all good. So it's def- there's definitely some culture there. It's just it's just a little bit different. Now. I know your your favorite team is the Yankees now. Did you grow up a Yankees fan? Who did you who did you root for growing up and who are some of the players that you really, really followed? Uh so I def probably I tell everyone I really didn't have a favorite team growing up. If I like recently I did like have like kind of joined the Nationals, like they're just right there. Yeah. Um uh, love, love the team. Uh but no, all my time once once I started base, I started baseball at nine. Ever since then, my favorite player was Andrew McCutcheon. I have followed him his whole career. Very nice. His time in Pittsburgh, all the routes he's taken, played for the Yankees for a little bit. Let's yep. go. Um, but yeah, he was That's it was old. Andrew McCutcheon. I tried to model my game around him. Everyone says I kind of look like him just a little bit. So I'm definitely gonna <laughs> take it. I'll take any comparison. That's awesome. Get. And he's back in Pittsburgh now, and he's gonna have a kind of a homecoming season as we as we yeah. call it. so i hope everything works out well for him what is the biggest challenge to playing pro baseball and i'm and um, when i ask that i mean more like there's obviously on the field stuff everybody's good but what is like what is the biggest challenge is it on the field is it off the field what do you think is the hardest thing i would say hardest thing on the field i would say probably just like the quantity it's a it's a lot. There's a lot of days, there's a lot of days where it hurts to get out of bed. Uh, but that but that's what we that's what we sign up for. That's what we love. We love love that feeling of uh just like working hard and stuff like that. Um but then mentally I would say just like going back to being able to reset, like yeah. um in pro ball, like there's there's just like scheduled playing a little bit. There's obviously some people are gonna play a little bit more, they need some development, they're trying to get them get them on the on the move so i would say just being able to reset and not let different days impact other days because once that starts happening it starts snowballing and then then we're in a we're in a big slump we're in a rut so you have to be able to bam if you have a good day have a bad day reset it because you may not be in the line tomorrow you may have you may have one or two days off you may be in there the next day. You, we, you're not really sure. So you just have to be able to reset and kind of regain your focus each each day. Very nice. Kyle, let's shift gears. Have, uh, let's, let's ask you some fun questions. If I ask all of my guests this question, you are a hitter. You're an outfielder. If you could face any pitcher, living or dead, throughout history of baseball, who do you face and why? Ooh. That is tough. That's actually the first time I've been asked this question. Hmm. I'm trying to. For this, I gotta, I gotta think of MLB the show. Like who? Oh, take, take your time. Who, take your time. Legendary pitchers on. Actually, <sighs> I 
these are going to be two. These are two very hard throwers okay. for the baseball. I think I would rather have. I'm thinking Nolan Ryan and Randy Johnson. The two I right like there. them both. A so righty and a lefty. I would love to actually see what their veal looks like compared. Like it was bad. It was different. It's a little bit different. Like those, those guys threw hard, but the whole league didn't throw hard. Now, now everyone throws pretty hard. So I, I would say I, hard doesn't hard. Hard is relative now. I so don't I'm, know. I have to think Randy Johnson and both Nolan Ryan because it's again. It wasn't like they were. They were so they separated themselves so much from the norm that oh, it's yeah. like. You know, it, it's. I think they'd be tough, right? In any, any level oh, yeah. of face. No, and for sure. Johnson's what six seven, and he's throwing a slider. So that was like, that's tough. That yeah. is tough. But I like it. I but, would. I would. I want to see them because I know. I know that they were, do, absolutely dominated during yeah, their time. They were really, really. I think good. I'd rather rather face Randy just because it's from the left, and I don't have. To, I'm less worried about Nolan Ryan leaving a like yep. 103 at the at the head, but yeah, it, it I might, like I, it. I don't know, Randy Johnson. He 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 dominated during this time. I I would love to see him. I like it. Uh, if you were not playing professional baseball for a career, what would you be doing? Oof. Well, <laughs> I do have a my degree in sport management from ODU. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say my last. Year, so I actually want to. Get in the front office of some organization, whether mm-hmm. football, baseball, basketball, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I just want to be be around sports and kind of – it'd be cool to be in, like, the room where the decisions are made, kind of. So that leads me to another question that I ask most of my guests, and this is a perfect one for you. Would you rather be the GM of a Major League Baseball team or would you rather be commissioner of baseball? Uh, I'm going GM. Commissioner's a lot. Right. And you don't really well, deal with the one team taking them to the championship, right? Yeah. Was, I mean, commissioner, like, he deals with all the owners and yep. all that stuff a little bit more. Like, as a GM, I, I, I would, like, like to just, like, evaluate players, bam, see who we can get, how can we make the team better, rather than kind of just monitoring the whole whole league, I guess. It's, and it's I think it's two different skill sets. One, obviously, like you're saying, you have to deal with the owners, you have to deal with all the contracts and with like television and networks and obviously all the things that MLB does to promote the game. But the other thing is just the GM. You've got your squad, you've got your whiteboard, you've got to like make the make the team and make the roster, put the coaches there that you think is gonna win a championship. It's a different it's two different things, but I always like to ask folks that. That's it. But you you seem like you're GM ready. Uh, I, I like it. I like it. Definitely, I want to say GM ready. I've got, I, I've a, got some buddies. I got some buddies if I could take with me that would we would absolutely we probably create a championship team. <laughs> oh, that's it's definitely harder harder than what it said, but I don't know. I think it'd be fun eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, see how see what path we take and if we can get up there. So this is the black baseball mixtape. I try to ask as many black pro players, players at every level, the unique situation that that you're in, the unique situation that they're in. We know what the numbers are when it comes to Major League Baseball. We know what the numbers are when it comes to Division I baseball, which are worse (laughs) than the Major Leagues. There are less black players playing Division I baseball than there are in the pro baseball ranks. And you're talking about, I think, 7% in the pro baseball ranks. 4% 4% in the Division One baseball ranks. That leads me to believe, as you've played throughout your career, the higher levels you get, the less black players you see. What has your experience been being a, an African-American, playing baseball? Did you find it? Um, did you find the community embrace you at, at most levels? Or were there times where you looked around and said, Hey, look this. This could be kind of isolated. How did you? How did you work through that part of of your game? Um, that's definitely definitely part of it. I would say let's um going back to Glen Allen, kind of. There was we had a we had a couple couple black guys uh on the team or on the team in certain years. Uh, whether varsity and JV, there was a little bit of us, but not not too many. But like I said, the Glen Island Richmond community is so 
so accepting and everything that I didn't really see an issue there. And then obviously come to ODU, we, I think the least we had was probably like four or five each year. So we had a, we had a couple, couple brothers on the team uh, throughout my time at ODU, but um, I don't think I would ever felt really isolated too much. Like you kind of, there's always, always just been a couple of us. So I wouldn't necessarily say isolated, but you we, like we do know that like we are the minority it's just one of those things so uh i would say really like college was probably the peak of that just like what you said by the numbers which is interesting um kind of less of a feeling of that in pro ball because mm. obviously now is us and like the latins they're all the international people they're now also minority so we're all just trying to <laughs> trying to make it shake yeah just yeah. trying to create a good group and all that, but but no, I me personally, like I've, I've heard a bunch of different stories and all that. Me personally, thankfully, I haven't haven't experienced anything firsthand where it's where it's like, yeah, leave him out because certain skin color or something like that. So I've actually had a great path. I'm grateful for that. And you've mentioned, you've mentioned especially off the air about maybe when your playing days are done figuring out ways to encourage other young black people to play the game like, like you did uh, or you have, or you're doing, uh, are there things that you see that can help more black players, especially in the youth levels, the high school levels, even getting in the college ranks? Is there things that you would see that would make it a little bit easier? I think now that we actually started talking about it, I think that it really just depends. It's going to come down to the area. Cause like we see areas where like if there's a like prominent black baseball player like near there that stays around there like obviously Atlanta's huge but mm-hmm. uh Jason Hayward has like helps with a facility in Atlanta that just, I just just opened one yeah yeah so like there's a draw to that that's going to get younger players to stay in it like okay we have someone to look up to let's try to do this um so really hopefully I can kind of do that to I would love to do it to more like the Richmond area somewhere in Virginia mm-hmm. to kind of just get get the black uh keep us uh black players in the game so we can hopefully make the college and stuff like that and the numbers now that i'm thinking about it it makes sense because i see videos and everything all this social media and everything i see a lot of good uh black high school players yep and stuff like this that are like high in the ranks so the the division one numbers might be too low they're probably seeing this bam they're getting an opportunity right out of high school to go play professional baseball so they're probably like, yeah, let's take that. Yeah, let's the take- the the telltale sign or or kind of the it's a historic watershed moment was this last year's MLB draft. I want to say might have been four out of the top six players drafted were African Americans. Um, it was like Drew Jones, Tamar Johnson. Um, it was just it was it was some really really high ranking draftees. And none of them, yeah, they all signed. <laughs> like yeah. when you're in the top, when you're in the top of the first round, you, you know they will commit to a university, but but they're all signed. I I do think that you're starting to see more interaction with black players that are able to make it to the college ranks. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting because you mentioned with ODU, um, if you had four or five players, African American players on your team, even throughout your career, that's actually high. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what I've found is there's there's schools like yours, there's schools like the University of Maryland, or obviously a lot of people talk about Vanderbilt that seem to do really well recruiting black players. But it's just we just got to get more schools oh, yeah. <laughs> overall to buy into that idea. You know, what I mean? like the schools that do it well, do it well. And they're oh, yeah. pretty successful in doing it. But uh, it, it's interesting. I um I also had the pleasure of. There's 299 Division One baseball programs, 299. Outside of the HBCU Division One programs, I think there's like 12 of them. But outside of that, there are only five black head coaches So wow. uh, of Division One. We've had them, believe it or not, we've had them all on the mixtape. All five of them we've had on the podcast. And they're phenomenal. And they actually were talking about how, how it is, some of the challenges of recruiting uh, black players recruiting in different areas. Obviously, baseball doesn't offer full scholarships like football and basketball does. So there's a, all of these different issues. But 
I say all that to say one of the things that I do think that will help the absolute most is players like yourself, Kyle, coming back to your hometown, coming back to your community and actually showing kids uh, like you or you're teaching kids in Virginia Beach. That's that's a great thing. Showing them that, hey, look, they're pro players. <laughs> they look like me and they could do really, really awesome things. So you're already doing it in, in a small part. And I, I bet you as you continue your career, it'll just keep going. Oh yeah, that's what, that's definitely the goal for sure. Like, um, as I said, I've had some of my buddies, uh, Ron Powell, um, like guy, he played ten, played Tennessee. I'm pretty sure he he's the one who kind of started this whole journey for me. And he used to tell me and his uh, son Theron all the time, like y'all are, y'all know y'all are black. It's gonna be harder. Like y'all have to be, yeah. y'all have to be better than everyone else, faster than everybody else, do all this stuff better than everyone else. Um, and that kind of just stuck with me. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna work hard. So if I can come back and just let any any group of people, uh, definitely the the black community, like, look, this can be done. It's hard. Baseball is hard, but it can be done if. Like, we're athletic enough, like, we have the skill, we have the knowledge, like, we can do this. It's just whether whether we want to just continue this this route or kind of let's make a name for ourselves in the game of baseball. Well, you are making a name of yourself. You will continue to do so. I am so excited. I am not a Yankee fan. I have never been a Yankee fan. It's a, I grew up here. It was the Orioles and then the Nationals. They're my they're my two leagues and my two teams. But I will be rooting, rooting, rooting for you, Kyle. I will be following you as you go through this season. Uh, I'm so excited for you, and I'm so excited for what it represents, uh, not just for our hometown, but what it represents for the larger community. I cannot thank you enough for your time. Tell everybody where they can find you on social media so we can follow you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, Kyle Battle 4 on every every platform, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, go find me. I'm there. <laughs> Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Black Baseball Mixtape. Until next time, we're out.